Don't let this binder scare you. <laughs> I have so looked forward to today, and I have so dreaded today, as my husband can attest to. I've looked forward to it because there's not a teacher alive who doesn't love a captive audience. <laughs> I've dreaded it because this is the first time that I have ever publicly shared some specific details about my childhood. I am very quick up front to share the broad story of my childhood, of abuse and neglect, and the fact that I lived many years in group homes. I do that to take control of conversations. When people share memories of family traditions and holiday dinners, vacations, I'm uncomfortable and I don't want to make them uncomfortable. So I am very quick to say I haven't had the opportunities to have those memories. I remember very young uh, sharing as you do in school about your Thanksgiving dinner. And I proudly shared we were having fried chicken. And the kids all laughed at me. I had no clue what a turkey was. Today, rather than the surface part, I want to dig deeper as my way of giving back. And preparing for this was ultimately very painful. I had to come back to it over a couple of weeks to bring it to closure. So why am I doing it? And why am I doing it now? So I began to write my childhood chronology. Barbara Louise Shafter, today Barbara McQuinn, I was born in Orlando, Florida, a few years ago. <laughs> My mother was 16 years old. She had an eighth grade education, and by the time she was 21, she had six children. I don't know my birth father's background. And then I hit a wall. I couldn't remember where to go next. And frankly, I found out by looking at my birth certificate. I have so blocked my childhood that I couldn't remember. And I felt my back tense and my face was flushing and I was perspiring. Took a break, came back. And what I found is not a chronology, but I have like flashes. I have some very specific picture memories. One that I am not going to share with you other than to acknowledge that it exists. It simply just isn't appropriate for a luncheon and I don't even want to remember. Um, the piece I will brush over is that from my very earliest memories I suffered sexual abuse from family and non-family members. I ran away from home in the eighth grade to escape that situation. And it, is, it, it, it just isn't even, uh, it's not necessary today. You know what happened. It changed who I was. But more important than that is the neglect and abuse in other ways that I suffered. So the first thing I remember is living in what was probably a low income housing complex around kindergarten age, because I remember going to a community center. There was a big, across the back wall, a chalkboard. And every time I went, I drew three bunnies. I have no idea why, but I just remember those three bunnies, and I was very proud of myself. A little later, I'm still in elementary school, and I picture living in like a white wooden house, and I just remember a bunch of drunken adults, my younger brothers and sisters and I, so six of us, cowering in one bed with my mother using us as a shield. My mother left us the next Christmas day and I never lived with her again. I am in touch with her today, but I didn't live with her again. Today my story is about neglect, hunger, and uncertainty about where my home would be tomorrow, or the next day, or the next. I remember living for a while in what I think was a motel efficiency. 
So I don't remember birthday parties, trick-or-treating, going to movies. I think I must have done those things. But the abuse so overshadows it that I can't let those good things in. For you, for families first today, I forced some of those memories back in. And then I won't think about them again. I've had very good therapy over the years, and I know a specific way to block them out, and I do. So during this time, I didn't have friends. I clearly was not the play date that mothers wanted to bring home for their children. And I remember a recess. Elementary school seemed to have lasted forever, apparently. And we were playing jump rope. And everybody's laughing at me. And it's because I had on pajamas for underwear. And either I didn't have any underwear or pajamas were all that were clean. Don't know, I just remember again being that object of ridicule. Now jump forward to junior high school. This is a little nicer. Again, I went to community centers. And this time, there were a group of women who were teaching a series of lessons on personal hygiene. I loved it. I was so hungry for that information. And I went home and I found a cardboard box, opened it up, and made a chart for my own personal hygiene. And when I took it back to share with the women who were teaching the course, they asked if they could share it. And I figured, I was really proud of it, and I figured that they considered me one of their success stories. So I do appreciate that information even today. So how did I get from all that to now? When I ran away from home in the eighth grade, the system found me. I just couldn't see a way out of my life. And school was awful. Obviously, I didn't have friends. I came home to abuse. I was taking care of my five younger brothers and sisters. And that was the part that broke my heart, was leaving them. But truly, I, didn't know, I just didn't know what else to do. So ultimately, I don't know if it was two days or three, I was picked up by the police, and I was placed in a detention center, and then later at a county-run children's home where my brothers and sisters ultimately came. It was a very punitive place. I was always locked up in detention because if anybody did anything to my brothers and sisters, they had to deal with me. So <clears throat> we were there for about a year, and then came another turning point in our lives. All six of us were placed at the Florida United Methodist Children's Home in Enterprise, Florida. And I credit that organization, which serves children locally, as Families First serves children locally here in Palm Beach County. It was literally the first time in my life that I was physically safe and emotionally safe. Now you can imagine that I was a pretty angry young girl by that time. Truly, I could not be bad enough for them to not love me. I think I just finally submitted to the love. They just loved the anger out of me. When, so I was there for three years, the summer going into high school, a family who lived in Deland, which is nearby, asked if I would be a live-in nanny for their four children. My house mother had planned that the family was her daughters. And my house mother wanted me to experience a normal family life. At the end of that summer, they called a family meeting and they asked me if I would live with them. Not as a nanny, as a family member. I'm a good promise. And I had truly begun to dream about that. So my senior year in high school, I learned to drive a car, I went to football games, I went to parties, I even joined a little sorority, I don't know which one it was, but Deland was big on that stuff, college town. I went to the dentist for the first time. In fact, my first year in college, I lost a front tooth. I literally had not had dental care. Today, I have the most expensive mouth, I'm sure, <laughs> in the universe. Big. Then, <clears throat> I'm close to there, I got ahead of myself in my notes. I memorized it so much. So we fast forward to today. I did go to college. I was a very good student in my senior year in high school. I was a National Honor Society. I was just safe. 
It was wonderful. So fast forward to today, and I mean very literally most days, the first thing I think when I wake up is, I'm so grateful for my life. Now, and sometimes I do struggle with believing that I am a good human being and that I deserve this life that I have. But I've learned to forgive myself for wrong choices I've made because I know that the adults who should have loved me and nurtured me didn't do that. And that little girl deserved better. And when I wrote this, my heart hurts for that little girl. I credit the adults who took care of me, a house mother and a caring family, for giving me help and for giving me hope, for showing me my future, a teacher, a principal, a school board member, a husband, excuse me, a wife. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. And a mother. I went into education because I want to help students. Even when they push away a helping hand, I will stay there and I will keep at it so that they'll know I'm really, really listening to them. And I know in my heart that, their heart, that, that they can be better. So you just keep at it. Their experience usually is not that people are there to help them. Now the educators in this room and some of the others of you no, start the story. Please bear with me while I quickly read it. Once a man was walking along a beach. The sun was shining and it was a beautiful day. Off in the distance, he could see a person going back and forth between the surf's edge and the beach. Back and forth, this person went. As the man approached, he could see that there were hundreds of starfish stranded on the sand as a result of the natural action of the tide. The man was struck by the apparent futility of the task. There were far too many starfish. Many of them were sure to perish. As he approached, the person continued the task of picking up the starfish one by one and throwing them into the surf. As he came up to the person, he said, you must be crazy. There are thousands of miles of beach covered with starfish. You certainly can't make a difference. The person looked at the man, he then stooped down and picked up one more starfish and threw it back into the ocean. He turned back to the man and said, I sure made a difference to that one. So the starfish story is a family's first story. One child, one family at a time. <clears throat> Every time family's first is able to change the life of a child, it affects generations to come. In 27 years, Families First of Palm Beach County has done that for over 300, excuse me, 30,000 families and children. Because the focus is on prevention and early intervention, hundreds of children each year are escaping abuse, neglect, and chaos, and their families remain intact, and they can provide their children with safe and nurturing environments. Again, I emphasize Palm Beach County because Families First is Palm Beach County, as the Florida United Methodist Children's Home was Volusia County. I'm so thankful that for me, time didn't run out. And there's a child today, a family today, that needs your help. Families First has been doing that so successfully for 27 years. And today, I come full circle because I serve on the Families First Board as our school board representative. Our CEO, Julie Swindler, says, we give families a hand up, not a hand out. We give families the ability to be self-sufficient and provide safe, nurturing homes for their children. Families First of Palm Beach County is addressing our community, our families, our children, our starfish. So I close by returning to an image I gave you earlier. I leave you with a picture of two young, innocent sisters scavenging garbage for food. We can do better than that. Thank you. 